There are an absurd number of zombie games on the market. It seems like every few years there's just a handful of games that come out with a lot of potential and most of them kind of flop. A good example is Back for Blood. It was supposed to be a really good game made by some of the team that made Left for Dead, and for some reason the game was just average. But what if I told you that there was another zombie game that was nowhere near average? One that looked like it came out in 1995, played the same music over and over again for hours on end, and infuriated you so badly that you wanted to quit games altogether and become a monk. One where you spend two hours organizing your virtual house just to inevitably die because you tripped on literal air into a pile of zombies. Sounds like a terrible game, doesn't it? But here's the thing. It's the most addictive survival game I've ever played. And while it looks stupid on the surface, it will easily entertain you for hundreds or even thousands of hours. In short, Project Zomboid is absolutely awesome, and some of the reasons why will blow your mind. You'd be surprised how much this little, ugly-looking game is hiding under the surface. But first, let me give you the rundown of what this game is about. <clears throat> you survived the zombie apocalypse. No, actually, you don't survive it, ever. Because you drive like an obese American woman in an electric scooter, and you're suffering from an endless wave of boredom, because nothing kills more than not doing a goddamn crossword puzzle every five minutes when you're trying to survive in hell. Speaking of hell, the game takes place in rural Kentucky. Howdy folks, this is me, Colonel Sanders. While in the beautiful state of Kentucky, you play as one of the people left behind, struggling to survive the zombie apocalypse. You aren't some hero, warlord, Rick Grimes character. No, you are Joe Smo, and your skills are lacking in pretty much every department. No, literally, your character is straight up useless, you can't do anything on your own. And also, your journey is gonna be a hard one. You will die a lot. You will never have a run where you don't die. I mean, the game even tells you this in the beginning, but yet you'll keep trying and you will keep dying every single time. And the game never gets old. I don't think I can even attempt to put into perspective how many stupid ways you'll die in this game. For example, one time after surviving for a very long time and fortifying an entire base, loading it with food, getting my own car, and having great skills and weapons and even a companion, I was feeling comfortable. We'd killed dozens of zombies in our front yard, and, well, the homeowners association was gonna fine us. So I figured, hey, why not burn the zombies? My friend Nolan and I spent almost an hour piling up every single dead zombie in the region and starting a fire to burn them. But for some reason, they wouldn't burn. So as I inched closer to investigate what the problem was, I caught on fire. It's okay, it's okay, easy solution. In my house, I have running water, I could just go put the fire out. Let me just run inside and turn on the shower because why not? This is going to be so easy. So I entered the house, turned on the shower, and unfortunately it was a little bit too slow, and I died. And I lost all my skills, and it was really annoying. But again, even with this, it's not a big deal. Yeah, it does suck, but I could just create a new character and find my friend to return to our base. Because the world that you live in continues even when you die. So whenever you die, your old character will become a zombie, you can just kill him, grab your stuff, and continue on your journey. So in theory, this sounded good, but no, the game said, fuck you. While I made the journey back to our fully geared house that we spent hours fortifying, my flaming corpse caught the entire fucking house on fire, burning everything and all of our progress in the process. And best of all, the goddamn pile of zombies survived the entire thing. Welcome to Project Zomboid, a game that we're gonna break down and analyze to determine why exactly it's so awesome. If you've played this game and have had experiences like the one I just told you, please tell me your best stories in the comments where people can really get a feel for the misery that they're missing out on. So, in Project Zomboid, you explore the absolutely enormous map and go where you want to go based on your ideal playstyle. Do you like taking it easy and staying relatively safe? Live in the woods and make occasional supply runs into the cities. Want more of a challenge? Live in Louisville, and you will regret it, my friend. The good thing is, you aren't just Joe Smo like I said earlier, but you're actually your own handcrafted version of Joe Smo when you play this game. When creating your character, you can pick one of 21 occupations. These are basically skill buffs in specific categories based on what your hypothetical character did before the apocalypse started. These jobs include things like a firefighter, which buffs your strength and axe skills, a carpenter that helps you excel with a base building, and a burglar that allows you to more easily sneak past zombies. This creates the foundation for your character and allows you to build upon it further with traits. Traits are either positive or negative, and you have to balance the cost of them to equal out to zero. 
Your character can't be too OP, so you have to choose your negative traits wisely based on your survival plan and your goal. So, you can be an overweight, muscle-bound, deaf, illiterate, chain-smoking lumberjack if you want to roleplay as a resident of Kentucky. I almost always go with a lumberjack because I love using axes and pickaxes for combat. Not gonna lie, sometimes they're pretty OP. And in my last few characters, I picked traits that made me able to see better at night and to learn new skills quickly. But on the other hand, I was also underweight and drove extremely slow. This balance worked perfectly with my playstyle and allowed me to make the game feel like my own before I inevitably died. This combination and possibility for different playstyles is the first thing that makes Project Zomboid stand out among a sea of stupid survival games. Sure, games like The Forest are a lot of fun and they're really solid games. But after you've played it a few times, you don't really care to play it again because it's the exact same experience every single time. Because of the skills and the traits in Project Zomboid, and some other things that I'm going to talk about in a second, it is truly infinitely replayable. Infinitely replayable games are great because they hold your interest for a lot longer than other games and they're easy to keep coming back to. That's why I'm excited to partner with the sponsor of today's video, Enlisted. Enlisted is a new kind of first-person shooter that combines PvP with PvE combat, and it has campaigns that are so varied that they feel like individual games. You can take command of a squad of customizable AI soldiers and fight in massive battles with hundreds of targets led by other players, and those varied campaigns that I mentioned a second ago offer a new experience every single time, with unique equipment, uniforms, vehicles, and locations that are true to their historical timeframes. From the outskirts of Moscow in 1941 to the heart of Berlin in 1945, the game has over 100 weapons, tanks, aircraft, and unique soldier classes, from engineers to riflemen. This variation in gameplay is my favorite thing about the game, and the number of weapons and vehicles makes it, like I said, infinitely replayable. Play Enlisted today on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox by using my link in the description. If you sign up right now, you can even get a free bonus pack including multiple weapons, soldiers, and a premium account. Thanks again to Enlisted for sponsoring this video. So once you finish making your character, you spawn into the world, and it's time to start surviving. But like I said, this isn't some surface level survival game, and you're gonna have to work hard to ensure that you survive your impending doom. Your biggest threat is obviously the zombies. While they're weak and easy to handle in small numbers, like children, these things are everywhere, and if you aren't careful, they can easily overwhelm you and cause your inevitable death. I mean, you could literally just push them on the ground and stomp on them when there's only one or two, but when there's a big group, they're gonna be a lot more difficult and you gotta be a lot more strategic. If you do get bitten by a zombie, you're dead. 100% of the time, you will die. It'll take time and you'll slowly turn, but you will die and there is nothing you can do about it. This makes it where you have to be extremely strategic with every interaction, and if you get overly comfortable, well, see you in hell. There's been times where I was playing with friends and I was stupid geared with the best vehicle in the game and guns and armor and all sorts of stuff, but I died because I got too confident and got overwhelmed by a large number of zombies when I literally had a fucking minigun in my hand. I had a minigun, and I still died because I got overly confident. You have to stay on your toes at all times and you have to make sure you have the skills that you need to survive. And these skills are really important with your playstyle because sometimes your character can be struggling. He could be scared, anxious, overwhelmed, bored, and all sorts of other effects that drastically affect your gameplay. So, for example, if you make a character who's afraid of the outdoors, he's gonna get overwhelmed even easier when he's fighting zombies. But if you make a character that's afraid of the indoors, while you're trying to set up your base and survive, he's gonna go crazy and want to get outside. So these are all things to think about while you're building your character. You start out with some base level skills that change depending on what occupation you picked. But you need to evolve these skills and work to expand your consciousness as a player if you want to make it in this unforgiving world. You have to read books and complete actions to increase your skill levels, and it's absolutely necessary to make it later in the game. For example, you first spawn in and the world isn't too harsh. There's a lot of loot in buildings, and I mean, the city even has power and water. How hard could it be? But after two weeks, the power and the water turns off, and you need to make sure you have a high enough carpentry skill to make rain catchers and an electric skill that can help you power your fridge with a generator. Mechanics are important because every single goddamn part in your car could break and be replaced, and farming is required if you want to have a sustainable food source later in the game. You could read books to get XP boosts that make learning these skills a bit faster, and you could do actions like disassembling furniture or hot wiring cars to get the experience to increase your skill level. So you need the skills to survive, but that is not all. 
This game is actually surprisingly complex, and it takes a lot of thinking about what you're doing in order to make it in this goddamn world. This simple looking isometric survival game is the most detailed game I've ever played. And no, I'm not exaggerating. You can break windows, but if you don't pull the glass out of the frame, you can cut yourself and start bleeding or rip your clothes. Your character gets bored and can cause him to be unhappy if he doesn't do anything for entertainment. You need keys to drive cars and you somehow have to actually find those keys in the world. Crops can get diseased and the disease can spread between crops if you don't take care of it, which you can actually do by using cigarettes to make insecticide. You can make a near unlimited number of food dishes based on the ingredients that you choose to put into the pot. You can control the AC in your car to cool yourself off if you're too hot. If you're in the front seat of a cop car and you want to get in the back, you actually have to get out of the car because the game accounted for the divider thing that's in the back of cop cars. You can take your shoes off to walk more quietly around buildings without detecting zombies. If you shoot out of the window of your car with a two-handed weapon, it won't allow you to steer while you're doing it. But if you shoot with a pistol or something that takes one hand, you can still steer. And these things are just the surface. There are hundreds of little design choices in Project Zomboid that build upon the core gameplay loop to make it to where you really have to focus on every single action to stay alive. And I think that's why this game is so goddamn immersive and why it hooked my friends and I for hours on end. I don't even know the best way to communicate how detailed this game is. Like, if your clothes are wet, you can set them out outside to dry faster by just setting them on the ground. I really appreciate when games do stuff like this because the game just works how you would expect it to in real life. Sometimes games limit you, but this game does not limit you at all, and anything that you think should work most likely does. And that's why it hooked my friends and I for hours and hours on end. A lot of survival games become mindless over time. Back to the example of the forest, you eventually build a big ass mega base, and you no longer have to worry about the cannibals fucking you up. And while the game is fun, the strategy is just to get bigger and stronger and make everything easier. It becomes simple and you don't have to think about what you need to do in order to survive because all the risk is gone. You're completely geared. But in Zomboid, there is never a dull, thoughtless moment. As you're working on fortifying your base, you're gonna run out of food. When you go out on a food run, you're gonna need to find some medicine to heal your newly acquired problems. Once you heal yourself, you realize that the power is going out in a few days and you need to get rain catchers in order to have water. But to do that, you're gonna need to learn carpentry, which requires you to go out on a run to disassemble all of the goddamn furniture in Kentucky, which requires more food, and then you get back and your base has been destroyed, and the cycle never ends, and Jesus Christ, someone please give me a Xanax, this is stressful. The level between challenge and anxiety in this game sits perfectly in the middle, which, as I talked about in my last video on why AAA games are boring now, is the perfect place for something to be an enjoyable activity. And with everything, after all of that challenge, you're still gonna die. It's inevitable. When you die, sure, you lose hours of skill building and effort and probably some of your items, but like I said earlier, you can actually respawn as a new character and find your old one as a zombie to get your stuff back and take residence in your old base. Since you're playing as a generic survivor, your next character is another generic survivor in the ever-changing, desperate world that's been shaped by all of the previous survivors. All of these things help to make Project Zomboid the perfect survival game. But there are some other things that are the icing on the cake. And these things start with the most important part of all of this, the passion that the developers have for their product. This game is nine years old, and the small team has continued to update it regularly, not with stupid shit, but actually with innovative game-changing mechanics that improve the game even further. They're even currently working on their biggest update yet that adds NPCs into the world, which is honestly insane. The game is already near perfect, and with the continuous updates and support by the developers, Project Zomboid is going to become an indie survival game icon. And the whole community is supporting this game and helping to make that dream possible. Project Zomboid has some of the best modding support out of any game I've ever seen, and with thousands of workshop mods on the market, you can tailor the experience to be whatever you want it to be. So what we have here is an infinitely replayable game, with an infinite number of mods and support from the developers. It's a game that's constantly changing and immerses you unlike any other survival game on the market. And best of all, you can do it all with friends and multiplayer if you don't want to face the unforgiving world on your own. And that, my friend, is why Project Zomboid is so awesome. What are your experiences with Project Zomboid? Share your cool stories in the comments to show other people how awesome this game can be. And make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and share this with a friend if you think they would enjoy this game. Also, just wanted to remind you to play Enlisted using my link in the description, and thanks again to them for sponsoring this video.
I will see you guys next time and peace.